Oasis generated a lot of excitement after announcing they were going to reform the band after a 15-year hiatus. But not everybody's pleased about it, namely those who somehow feel threatened by the nostalgic rehabilitation of a cultural moment, which existed before their woke ideological crusade turned everything to utter shite. Prime example being Simon Price's whining temper tantrum in The Guardian. Stop the celebrations, Oasis are the most damaging pop cultural force in recent British history. I never attacked him on his look, and believe me, there's plenty of subject matter right there. 90% of this article isn't about the quality of Oasis's music. It's about mean words Noel and Liam Gallagher said in the past and their, God forbid, contrarian political opinions. The reasons why Oasis were so damaging. Because Liam Gallagher deployed some spicy insults. Because Noel Gallagher described Ed Miliband and Jeremy Corbyn as fucking communists. Where's the lie? Because Noel complained about Glastonbury being too woke. It is. And because Noel had the temerity to play a guitar with a Union Jack emblazoned on it. You know, the flag of the country where he's from. Which offends this moron to such a degree he haughtily dismisses it as a butcher's apron. It's no coincidence that Oasis are the band of choice for flag shaggers and reform voters. Oh yes, flag shaggers from the same people who'll denounce you as a bigot for thinking this is a bit too much. In other words, because Noel and Liam have refused to feed themselves into the screeching progressive purity filter and become dutiful NPC automatons for the message, the example they set for others cannot be tolerated. Oh no, the Gallagher brothers don't share the same banal opinions as other vapid celebrities, the political class and corporate HR departments. How dare they? The music industry doesn't like mavericks. Yeah. You know, the reason why there are no bands now is because in the 90s, Oasis and Primal Scream and Blur and Pulp and all those great... We were the mainstream. And what the music industry doesn't like the mainstream being a load of fellas on drugs. <laughs> Drunk half the time on a Tuesday. <laughs> but they don't like that. They like people like Harry Styles. Yeah. Who they say, wear this dress and shut it. <laughs> <laughs> Wear this, sing that, and go on. Price then bemoans the fact that Pulp, another working class 90s band from the North, aren't more popular than Oasis. Presumably this is based on the fact that Jarvis Cocker has all the correct ensemble of politically correct opinions and isn't problematic. Because it's definitely not based on them being a more successful or better band, which they clearly weren't. The Gallagher's knuckle-dragging ideas on sexuality and politics arguably shouldn't matter. We're all familiar with the concept of separating the the art from the artist. Dude just wrote an entire article in which he failed to separate the art from the artist. Something extremely popular, almost universally liked, exists. The Guardian, why said thing is in fact incredibly problematic and you should hate it. My children now will have less freedom because of this ridiculous woke culture. It's a question I've heard so many times before. Paul, you're nearly pushing middle age. Alright, rude. How come you look ten years younger than you are? Only ten? Well, it's not rocket science. It's called regularly moisturising your face and having a good skincare routine. That's why I'm excited to have Tiege Hanley as the sponsor of today's video. They help men start and maintain a skincare routine by simplifying the entire process. I recommend you start with their level one system, which comes with all the basics. A daily face wash to get rid of all the dirt and grime on your skin. A two times a week exfoliating scrub to get rid of all the dead skin cells. An AM moisturizer with SPF 20, because you should always be protecting your skin from the sun. And a PM moisturizer to help your skin stay hydrated and healthy throughout the night. Their products have made my skin look and feel healthier than ever. But you don't have to just take my word for it. They've got over 7,000 five-star reviews on their website from satisfied customers around the world. And because Tej is sponsoring this video, they're offering you an amazing deal. Just click the link in the description to get 30% off your first skincare system and a free gift. Plus, as a member, you'll also get 20% off for life. By the way, both gifts you're choosing from are $20 value and a complete game changers. A silicon body scrubber or a nail and face grooming kit. They've pouched it up all nice as well. Personally, I prefer the silicon body scrubber because it just feels so soft and silky on the skin. Ooh, not gonna lie, that does feel nice. So don't wait any longer. Click the link in the description box down below to start your skincare journey today. This celebrity craze that's going on at the moment, it's not for me, man. Do you think that it's it's dangerous for society to have this obsession with celebrity? Yeah, I think there's, I think there's too many famous people in the world, you know what I mean? All, and you know what I mean? I think it's just everyone seems to be famous, don't they? Do you know what I mean? And there's a lot of famous people out there for the wrong reasons. And at least you're famous because you're a beautiful young man and you do a great job on the radio. Thanks. And man. I'm famous because I'm another beautiful young man and I do 
a great job on the stage and that. But there's a lot of famous people out there, so-called celebrities that what? Yeah. To cele- you know, they're famous because they're orange. <laughs> You know what I mean? I've got massive white teeth and stuff like that. So, so yeah, I get the right up when people call me a celebrity. Shit libs despise Oasis for four primary reasons. One, much of Oasis's fan base consists of white working class men for whom the pontificating metropolitan liberal elite has a seething visceral hatred, exemplified by our prime minister who, after threatening to mass arrest them for complaining about immigration, is now inflicting another punishment by planning to ban smoking in pub gardens. Two, Noel and Liam are that rare breed of celebrity that's become too big to cancel, meaning they can get away with, God forbid, saying controversial things that are true, without having their careers and legacy destroyed by the baying mob. And there's like bombers roaming free around the fucking city, and our government, and the government before them, and the next fucking government after this one, will be powerless to stop it, because of some fucking hippie ideal about people's religious beliefs. Three, Oasis reminds people of when Britain had a distinct cultural identity that wasn't constantly denigrated and diluted. And four, Oasis has always exemplified that kind of swaggering confidence which they're desperately trying to social engineer out of working class white men. And instead turn them all into gelded, emotionally incontinent, mental health jellyfish. Ashamed of themselves, ashamed of their country. Constantly pussyfooting around, chronically anxious about how they behave and the words that come out of their mouth. Like I was going up to Manchester the other week and fucking some guy's going, can you put your mask on, on the train? And I was like, uh, and they said, because uh, the transport police would get on, they'll find you a thousand pounds, but you don't have to put it on if you're eating. So I was saying, all right, so this killer virus that's sweeping through the train is going to come and attack me, but it's going to see me having a sandwich and go, leave him. Yeah, but I, I get what you're saying, but what's having his lunch? <laughs> Shitlips hate Oasis for the same reason they hate Morrissey, despite having once worshipped the ground that he walked on, because Morrissey told the truth about what's happening in his homeland, about the consequences of mass migration. He had the temerity to skewer how woke turns everything to shit. It's just another word for conformity. It's yeah. the new way of saying conformity. Diversity. You don't see anything diverse anywhere. No. It's all conformity. It's having the opposite effect, in fact. Isn't it, it is because when people talk about diversity, they don't think about the great things that we don't have in common. Mm-hmm. And those things are ignored. And they always made countries very interesting because you could travel to Germany, you could see the most incredible culture. You go to Italy, you see the most incredible culture. Now they just want everything to be the same, the same, the same. Yeah. So diversity means conformity. It doesn't mean let's, it doesn't mean avant-garde or let's mm-hmm. make really interesting strange art. It means box everybody. Yeah. Diversity, I think, is it's a dying, dreadful yeah. word. Mm-hmm. Pin it to anything and that situation is finished. Mm-hmm. It's a terrible word. Now, some of the very same people who grew up with Smith's posters on their walls bitterly campaigned to have Morrissey posters removed from public spaces. All because just like Liam and Noel, he refused to bend the knee. He refused to sacrifice his integrity to be absorbed by the woke blob. 